guys David are one, two, and two, and it's fine, finally list day. Ah, yes, I, I took a break from doing these because... You got drained on them, be honest. Well, that and I had this weird habit of not finishing things. Like, so many Zelda games, I just get to the last boss and just quit playing. And this is the last set of GX, so it's like, it's really in theme for me. This is, this, this totally, this, this totally checks out. Anyway, <laughs> today's set is Light of Destruction, the last set of GX. Next is, uh, some, like, Genesis of the Duelist or some hooey. It's the, it's the one with Stardust Dragon on it. So that's the first 5D set. So. Uh, let's hope that GX can end with a roar and not with a whimper, because that would just be anticlimactic. And in order to finish out the worst era of Yu-Gi-Oh, I got Fuck you. I got the worst player I could find. Oh, you <laughs> suck so much! And my buddy Jason, help us out. Just wave goodbye to the era of heroes. The rules for this set are basically the same as always. We try to look at the set as a set, but that's gotten so impossible at this point that we have to look at at least future support and use things like modern play of a card as a tiebreaker. And as always, if we have a card that's on the forbidden or limited list, it is chunked up the list because if it's banned, it must be good, right? Without further ado, here's Jason with whatever number 10 is. So number 10 on our list is Volcanic Queen. Volcanic Queen reads, this card cannot be normal summon or set. You can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by tributing one of their monsters. You cannot normal summon or set the turn that you set it. Pretty much like a mini lava golem, but the difference lies in the now second effect which your opponent will end up having, which is during the main phase, they are allowed to send one other monster to the graveyard to burn you for a thousand life points. And also, unless they send another monster, to the field, to the graveyard, they will end up taking a thousand life points damage. So if you take one monster, say a big old beater or something that's nearly instructable, you tribute it off, you put your bonnet, your, your opponent, put their, you put your what? <laughs> Boner? I, just, <laughs> I said you put it on your opponent's side of the field. <laughs> Judge, you sexually harassing me. In the days where the only card that did this was Lava Golem, Volcanic Queen was a decent second choice to get rid of something more problematic than what Volcanic Queen itself would be. Number nine is Golden Bamboo Sword. Why is your voice doing that? What? Hi lows. It's my Davenator voice. I always do it. Oh. I mean, I've noticed it. I just never asked you. I don't really talk like that in real life. <laughs> hey, Jason, how are you? Like, like, are you making fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my YouTube voice. You gotta do a YouTube, other, if, otherwise if I'm just talking at the camera, there's no energy and it's boring. Well, you have energy. I just didn't know if you realized you were doing it. Number nine <laughs> is Golden Okay, I ain't telling you to switch it. I said... <laughs> Number nine is... Get the now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Number nine is Golden Bamboo Sword. If you control a Bamboo Sword card, draw two cards. Ah, this normal spell is Pot of Greed, a situational Pot of Greed, but with cards like, what is it, Broken Bamboo Sword or... Phantasm... It's that one cursed the spooky one. one. It's, what's it's the this, cursed one. What's this cur curse? That's what it's called. Cursed, 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 cursed bamboo sword. There is a little tiny equip spell engine that you can use this card as a part of the draw engine, and it's just a way of fitting your deck. And with Azold, you can get even cheesier with it nowadays. So we figured we'd put it at nine because it's kind of pot agreed. It's worth mentioning. I must use my all state voice the whole time. Yes. Wow. Number eight is. Battery Man, Industrial Strength. You don't have to do the voice. I have no choice anymore. Okay. <laughs> Battery Man, Industrial Strength reads, you can special summon this card by removing from play two Battery Men from your graveyard. Now while face up on the field, you can remove another Battery Man from your graveyard in order to destroy one monster and one spell and trap card. So yes, it does put you in good hands. <laughs> Gladiator Beast Geyser Geys shit now I'm saying Geyserus. <laughs> Geyserus. Gladiator Beast Geyserus. This fusion monster is made of one Glad Beast Bestiari and one other Glad Beast monster. This monster must be special summoned from your extra deck by shuffling into your main deck one Glad Beast Bestiari and one other Glad Beast monster. It's not really a fusion summon, although you don't need polymerization, so that's kind of neat, I suppose. When this thing is special summoned, you can target two cards in the field and destroy those two targets. So as soon as it comes out, it gets you a little plus one of card advantage, which mitigates the whole 
of shuffling two guys into your deck thing. Also, at the end of a battle phase in which this thing has fought, you can special summon two glad beasts from your deck, except the bestiary, presumably the one you used to make it. So, there you go, there's your glad beast fusion, it got its representation. Number six is Dick Lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> deck Lockdown reads, as long as this card is faced up on the field, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand. Also, monsters cannot be special summoned from the main deck. Then after the second standby phase, after this card's activation, you destroy this card. Deck Lockdown is a great side decking option because it prohibits people from searching out their deck, which is a very prominent strategy in every generation of Yugi. It's a continuous chance for it's pretty much a continuous ass, a continuous ass, a continuous ass, a continuous ass. That you can play after you do all your own searching and then let it burn itself out once you get everything that you need. Not bad. And if you're playing any of the pot cards, it doesn't stop you from getting those. So keep that in mind. Number five is Fossil Dynapascia Cephisiflo. That is not even remotely close to what it Pachyo says. Pachyocephalo. It's because it's a Pachyocephalosaurus. That's the name of the dinosaur that it is. I just said close enough. I didn't Pachyocephalo say Pachyocephalosaurus. You want to see how many times you can say it before messing it up? Pachyocephalosaurus. <laughs> Fossil Dina is a level 4 rock earth monster with the following effect. When this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. And it has a continuous effect that reads, neither player can special summon monsters. This is like one of the best normal summons and then kind of just play some back row pass cards we have in this game because against the right deck, your opponent's gonna have a very good way of outing this card. Give it moon mirror shields and you got a certified fresh David Eater 1-2-2 and two stupid stun deck. Fossil Dyna is actually a really good side deck card in a lot of uh, less than conventional anti-meta decks. So uh, I think your two Dragos can run it, can't they? Uh, yeah, two yeah, they, Dragos, like, they'll side it in. We, don't, we don't feel the hate from that one. Yeah, so that's cool. Number four on our list is Summon Limit. Summon Limit reads, neither player can summon more than two times per turn. Negated summons count towards this. Card effects that would summon that get negated will not count. So for example, if someone negates a polymerization, it doesn't count. Yeah, like you pendulum summon and a solemn warning you. This Batman. <laughs> <laughs> get that nice little good neg in there. <laughs> then that counts towards it. Now, Summon Limit, you play your hand out the first time around, you set that up. Anyone who's going past the Synchro era, so if they go, I normal summon one monster from my hand, and a special summon another monster from my hand, they gotta stop. Whatever little combos they were gonna bring together, it's not gonna work as effectively because from the Synchro era on, most of these viable summoning mechanics require you to do more than one. Now, you'll find the exception to be a Pendulum Summon, because that's one summon technically, and you'll find the other exception to be Fusion Summon, because you know, you lose your hand or stuff like that. But other than that, the other three other summoning mechanics will end up failing this fight more than anybody else. Number three is Honest. The cover card of the set. Honestly, a light level four fairy that has the following effect. You can return this face up card from the field to your hand. During the damage step, when a light monster in your side of the field battles one of your opponent's monsters, you can discard this thing during damage calc to have your monster gain the attack power of the monster it is fighting. This is one of the sneakiest ways to win Yu-Gi-Oh. There's no, it feels really bad when you're about to win, you're about to crash over their little level four, whatever it is, light guy, like Yamato or something. And then they just like damage calc and you're like, no, <laughs> and they're like, honest, you're like, damn. <laughs> One of the coolest things about this card is the fact that it can bounce itself to hand. So if you're using something like Ties of the Brethren and like, what's like Counter Fairies or something, mm -hmm. you can like hit Bountiful Artemis, summon this thing from your deck and then have this thing added to your hand. That's just like a really cheesy little interaction you can do with Honest. And Honest, still to this day, would be a pain in the butt to run into. I, I'm not ever going to vouch for it though, because I don't want to do it. I don't want to no, so I don't honestly. want then I don't play it anymore, but I don't wanna I don't even want to deal with it. So don't play don't play it's bad. It's not bad. It's bad, don't play it. Number two is Woof. Because there's no O, it's Woof. Woof. The light sworn beast. Wolf cannot be normal summon or set. It must be special summon by an effect. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, special summon it. Now, me personally, I have 
a lot of controversy about this particular Light Sworn, who is dead in hand all the time. But I was outvoted by our moderator, so I'll suck it up and say that Wolf is the better uh, Light Sworn. My face hurts. All right, so today we have three honorable mentions. The first one is the one that I thought should have been on the list, so all my bias is going behind it. It's Judgment Dragon. Wolf don't win duels. JD does. JD does to this very day because it can special summon itself after four or more life swords are just in the graveyard. And by the little cost of a thousand life points, and we all know life points don't matter except for that last one, you get to nuke the entire field of every card but himself. So for a lot of times, you'll get people summon JD, blow up the field, summon another JD, and then summon the third JD, so that he's crashing you for 9,000. You can't do that with Wolf. What Wolf gonna do? Here's a little messy. God, this is gonna be on camera. I'm <laughs> keeping that. The reason why we picked Wolf, I, in the Discord, picked Wolf over Judgment Dragon was because Wolf is an extender, whereas JD is your finisher boss monster of the deck and not actually technically a Light Sworn card. The reason I made him an honorable mention was because he kind of skirts the rule of only one representation of an archetype on the list because he is technically not a Light Sworn monster. He is a support card for the deck, but not an actually part of the archetype. So he gets an honorable mention as a secondary number two. You happy? Almost. Ugh. The next honorable mention is King, a level seven water, what is it, a warrior? warrior. Spellcaster, interesting. The way this card works is you can tribute summon this card with its normal two monsters, one monster or zero monsters. Its attack just becomes a combined of whatever you tribute it. So you could just slap it down for nothing and it'll have zero, zero attack, or you could summon it with two, like, uh, and, and, and go super neg, but have him have a decent attack power. The reason why you'd ever care about this is because he has a floodgate effect and the more attack power he has, the more likely he is to stay on the field and be more annoying for your opponent. Neither player can tribute cards. He's, he's a walking mask of restrict. I suppose if you're playing like, I don't know, True Draco, you could play this in a mirror match because you tribute stuff and then your opponent can't. That's cheesy. That's cheesy. Mm. Right. Jason, just, Jason doesn't like the card. Even though I'm pretty sure he's probably never played against it because Mask Restrict's a better <laughs> option. It's, it's easier to use. But in this set, this is actually not too actually, bad. Actually, someone actually did sign that in Inner Regions when Draco was at full power. And I do remember uh, people were using it against Monarchs a little bit too. There was a reason why. I don't remember. What, I think because it was. Oh, because I think because you could Pendulum Summon it. Mm -hmm. That's why. Bring it out easy as possible. Ew. And just set it out there. I've actually seen a guy equip Moon Mirror Shield to it. The next honorable mention is Arcana. Force 21, the world. Look at you, Mr. Roman numeral. <laughs> I did get my edumacacia, thank you very much. Ugh. Arcana Force 21 reads, when this card is summoned, you flip a coin. If it comes up heads, you can then send two monsters you control to the graveyard and your opponent must skip their next turn. Which is crazy. Which is awesome. Technically a nake four, because you have to sacrifice two cards to bring them out. That, uh... Valhalla ha ha the Fall. <laughs> Valhalla. Fall of the Fall. Uh, now, the Tails effect, which is the negative effect, is during your opponent's draw phase, they must add the top card from their graveyard back to their hand. So, pretty much they'll be plusing because you got went Tails. super minus <laughs> to play this thing. You went super minus four <laughs> to <laughs> give them a plus two. This is not good, Yuki. How is this honorable, you say? Well, apparently... Not too long ago at a... I think it was a YCS. YCS event, thank you. One of the danger players tech this into their deck and managed to resolve its good effect. David fed me this one because I'm like, this is everything Arcana does that is a dishonorable mention. The whole deck is literally a half good concept. The, the Fool is okay because I don't know what his effect is, but... He can't be destroyed by battle. He just can't be destroyed by battle. And, and our dishonorable mention this time around is the Continuous Trap card. Lucky Chance. Lucky Chance says, uh, when a monster would activate its effect that requires you to flip a coin, you can activate this card's effect to flip another coin. If the results of both these coins match up, you can draw a card. This card is, um... It's bad. It's, it's bad. It's a Joey bad card that Joey himself was not dumb enough to use. And the weird thing about this card is it suffers from some sort of strange identity crisis where it can't tell whether or not it's a support card for flip coin decks where it's giving you extra draws or it's an 
anti-support card you would side against them to dissuade them from using their time wizard. I, I don't know. Either way, it's like a 50-50 shot. You're even going to get to draw a card. Otherwise, the other half of the time, it's just sitting on your field wasting space. So it, it's really just not worth to play it in either scenario. It's not a very good card, and I think it might be the worst card in the set. And before we get to number one, as always, we have to do our MetaMat plug. I think I forgot a last list video. Don't tell MetaMat. <laughs> if you guys want a custom cloth playmat, you can go send them a picture. They'll make it fuzzy and soft, and you can play on a cloud of dreams instead of one of those giant mouse pads, which leaves black crap on your cards. That's actually kind of sweet. Play it on a fun cloud. There you go. And number one is the currently forbidden card, Substitute. Substitute has the following effect as a level one aqua water monster. You contribute one monster to special summon one frog monster from your deck. Except Frog the Jam, because this is an old card. Uh, I don't think it's gotten an errata since Frog the Jam got an errata, <laughs> the Slime Toad. Frog monsters except Frog the Jam cannot be destroyed by battle, but no one cares about that effect. That's not why it's good. Why it's good is because this card is not a once per turn. It's not even a soft once per turn. It's certainly not a hard once per turn. So in theory, you can just keep tributing frogs to keep summoning frogs and just keep going and going and going and then put this thing next to something like, what is it, Mass Driver? Is that what they were doing with Frog FTK? Yeah, that was what Frog FTK was. I'm pretty sure it was Mass Driver. So yeah, this card's a little bit problematic. However, as a frog player, I'm like, I want it back. I really want it back. <laughs> give it to me. Give it to me now. You could probably just give it a hard once per turn and it'd be fine. Um, keep summoning in from your deck is until you run out of frogs. It, <laughs> that's a that's a little dumb. I'll give you that one. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the list, the last list of GX. Thank you, Jason, for stopping by and helping me kick this era of Yu-Gi-Oh in the butt and let the door hit it on its way out. Like, such hate! Such hate. <laughs> Remember, guys, if you don't troll the better, will. I'll see you guys next time for the first... The first, uh, what is it? What's the name of the, the, the Five motor? Ds? Five Ds, motorcycle. <laughs> Dueling with motorcycles. Dueling with motorcycles, <laughs> car games and motorcycles. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.